Here's another great use for force motion blur. I have some stock footage here that doesn't have any motion blur. Now that's sort of handy because um, if the stock footage that you had already had motion blur but the live action footage didn't, it would sort of look very odd and it's impossible to remove motion blur um, effectively. So it's kind of nice that uh, stock footage comes without, this particular stock footage comes without motion blur because I can add as little or as much as I like. So I'll just drag the force motion blur on here. And it's sort of uh, quite slow to render. It's 1080 footage, but it creates some fairly nice looking motion blur based on what it thinks is the projected path of these guts. So let's just play that. And it actually looks a little odd. Um, it looks like it has too much motion blur and we can easily fix that, but that's something to keep in mind. If you have too much motion blur, uh, you'll definitely know when that's happened because it'll just look absolutely ridiculous. Slightly less is always better than slightly more. So for this one, I might set it to maybe 120. Um, now let's just have a look here at some of these frames. You can see it's, it's sort of looking a little odd. Um, there's actually another plugin which does a way better job than Force Motion Blur. Uh, this is a cool plugin, but Real Smart Motion Blur, which uh, costs a couple of bucks, does a way, way better job. So before I apply that here, I'm just going to take a screenshot and then apply, uh, whoops, Real Smart Motion Blur. And we can compare the two of them. I much prefer Real Smart Motion Blur. It does a, a much better job, I think, of uh, getting it right. And I think it's definitely earned the title Real Smart. So by default, it has a lot less blur than um, than the force motion blur, but that's easily changed with these settings here. Now, both of these are pretty cool and they do a good job, but they're quite expensive um, in render time. The real smart motion blur is a lot quicker than force motion blur, but they are still they still take a little while. So if you don't have real smart motion blur and you don't want to have to calculate all these samples, Sometimes you can actually get away with um, things like directional blurs. So if you knew which uh, direction all the uh, all the guts were moving at, you could just simply add a directional blur. This is a very, very poor man's motion blur, but just say all these uh, guts are falling to the ground. You could simply blur them like this, and that would actually look fine. Um, a better example of using other blurs to simulate or fake, fake, fake motion blur is probably, um, is this here. And I have a fractal and uh, the screen is zooming constantly into this fractal. I'll just do a quick preview so you guys can see. And I can take you on this journey through this psychedelic fractal. Okay, that looks cool. So let's say we didn't have uh, real smart motion blur we had to use uh, force motion blur. Let's just apply this here. And um, again, it's gonna give us this problem with the solid, so then we'd have to render it out, add force motion blur to that, and it would take forever. Since we know that the camera is zooming in constantly, we could simply add a radial blur to do our fake, fake, fake motion blur. So CC radial blur. And uh, by default, oh, no, not the radial blur. I just want a normal radial blur. Not be wary of the CC variety. It's quite deceptive. I want the normal radial blur. And by default, it's set to spin. We want zoom. And now we can just simply increase this up a little bit and we get really fast rendering awesome fake, fake, fake motion blur with radial blur. And here's the result of that. That looks awesome. Okay, I have this uh, CG scene here, and it's uh, just a beauty uh, and an occlusion on top of that set to multiply. And it's just a paper plane flying towards the camera. So I have two layers here, and I don't really want to pre-compose them. So what I've actually done is added an adjustment layer with the Real Smart Motion Blur on it. And uh, so we can see that if I turn on this blur layer, that we're getting this really quick rendering uh, post-motion blur because uh, rendering CG motion blur is an absolute pain. But the problem that we get here 
is although it's really smart motion blur, there's just not enough information in this scene to uh, correctly um, generate motion blur. There's not enough uh, information to tell real smart motion blur that this is headed this way. It's quite deceptive due to the way that the camera flies straight past the screen. And also you'll note that there's actually information in here that we don't actually have along the edges that it's having to generate out of nowhere. So we're getting all these crazy artifacts. Although Real Smart Motion Blur is awesome, it's sometimes uh, not the best way to go. But considering CG Motion Blur like this, this is real proper CG Motion Blur, it takes way, way, way too long to render. Um, this scene here was going about six, mi uh, 6 minutes per frame, and that's for the beauty, and then 6 minutes for the ambient occlusion. Uh, and that at 25 frames a second. This this render took all night, pretty much. So how can we get nice motion blur in our 3D renders without having to spend an eternity rendering, but also avoiding problems that arise with uh, forced motion blur in these artifacts here? And the answer to that question is motion vectors. So just quickly, in a 3D application such as Maya or 3ds Max, Motion Blur is extremely easy to use. Uh, you just come to the render settings, turn on Motion Blur. The default settings are a little grainy, so I'd uh, increase the quality up uh, up here. This may be the, some of the samples, but uh, it looks absolutely amazing. 3D Motion Blur looks awesome. The only problem is the render time, as you all know. And when we're doing CG, render times are already too long. As uh, if you've ever worked with CG, your render times are too damn high. So adding motion blur and increasing the render times by say a factor of three in most cases for decent quality motion blur is just unaffordable. We, if we have a week long render, we can't afford to wait three weeks just to have pretty motion blur. So the way we get around that is with a pass, motion vectors. Uh, motion vectors is a render pass that we can render out of a 3D application and it's a really handy color-coded pass that simply gives us information about what direction each of the pixels are moving in. So we can see that uh, the different colors indicate different directions and they change as the objects uh, are rotated and are moving. So we can see that we've got quite a bit of banding in here. Uh, this is a color pass that needs 16 or 32 bits of information to be able to display all of the um, all of the different colors in here because as you can see we have lots and lots of different values which helps give a uh, give more information to our uh, motion blur. So let's uh, talk about how we set this up. Firstly under quality we need to make sure it's either 16 or 32 bits so in Maya that's under quality frame buffer so it's default uh, RGB uh, a 8 bit so I'm going to change this to 32 bit and uh, under the passes let's add uh, so we have here our 2D and 3D motion vectors. Uh, these work great for applications like Toxic and, uh, and Nuke and composite applications like that. But um, we'll be using real smart motion blur inside of After Effects. And uh, we need to use the normalized 2D motion vectors. So let's create that and close. And then assign it to our layer. Now something you have to know is whenever you add this pass to a certain render layer, it's because it's calculating motion blur, it's calculating between frames. So although I'm on frame 20, watch down here what happens when I click render. See how it changed? It went between 19 point something and 20 point something. That's um, my sampling between frames and because we have this motion vector pass on this layer, it's now rendering at a different point in time. Although I told it to render frame 20, it's rendering from 20 point something. So it's important that you, if you have um, other render layers such as ambient occlusion, you need to associate this pass with them as well. Because otherwise, um, sorry I'm just cancelling the render here, otherwise they'll be out of sync and your ambient occlusion you, it'll be unusable. So just keep that in mind whenever you add a, any motion vector to a layer, add it to every other layer. It's very quick to compute so it's, there's no problems there. 
So if we double click on it, we can get to the settings. And you can choose the uh, max amount of pixel displacement. You can go up to 1024 with a 16 or 32 bit image. And this means that it can measure 256 pixels of uh, motion blur or if, a, if an object moved 256 pixels. So I'm going to keep it at that. And um, that's all good. Uh, one thing I'd also like to add is a camera depth uh, remapped and uh, this is just so I can sort of uh, go through how to also add motion blur when compositing uh, depth of field as well in post. So I'm just going to associate this to the master layer as well. Double click on the depth remapped and um, I can see that this object when it loads is 80 pixels away from the camera or 80 units and the furthest anything away is maybe 250. So when I double click on depth remapped, I'm going to remap this from 0 to 1000 to 0 to 300, just to be safe, but get a lot more values. So that's pretty much everything set up. I'll just hit batch render. So I've got my render back. I rendered it as an EXR so I can get the 32 bits information. And because uh, Sun and Sky messes with the alpha, I'm just going to, sorry, the gamma, I'm just going to set the gamma back to 0.455 sort of equalize this and because it's a multi-channel EXR I'm just going to drag the, uh, the it into a new composition and call this one vectors and if I have a look here I don't want to change the gamma of these but I do want to add the extractor effect to uh, get the motion vectors out so I'll just add this here change red green and blue to the motion vectors and we can see here that we have our motion vectors with our different color codes. Um, before, when you could see a lot more of the colors, I'd actually change the gamma just for displaying purposes. But this is what it'll normally look like. You won't really be able to see too much variation, but the information is in here. So what I can do is simply grab the vectors, place it in here. I'll just quickly add a background, a white background. And then I'll add the real smart motion blur to an adjustment layer. If you just needed to apply it to the multi-channel, then you can just add it to there. But on here, we can see it's adding its fake motion blur. Sorry, we want the real smart motion blur pro vectors. And by default, uh, we need to tell it where the, uh, the motion blur information is happening. And of course, it's our vector layer. So we can see that we're getting some of this fake motion blur based on the information our vectors are giving us. And we can increase the blur amount here. This max displace is the same value that we had in Maya. And it was uh, by default, it was set to 256. I think I added that. So I'm going to set that to 256. And we can lower the motion blur or increase it if we need to. I like to normally keep it at 0.5. And uh, we can see we have our nice motion blur. Now, how do we composite this with our uh, with our depth pass as well? Well, what we need to do is blur the depth the exact same amount as the as the beauty. So, I'm going to grab the multi-channel EXR, put it to a new comp, and call this depth. Whoops, deal. Depth, and uh, add the extractor effect. Whoops. And in here for the RGB, I just want the depth. And there we have our depth layer. Cool. So what I need to do is apply the exact same um, blur to this as we did to our beauty. So I'm just going to come into the multi channel and uh, grab the adjustment layer along with the vectors, place them in here and change the blur from none. Tell it we're using our vectors. And now we can see that our depth pass is also being blurred just exactly with the same settings as our beauty, which is great. So now what we can do, I'm just gonna grab the multi-channel, put that into a new comp, call this blur. And then we can add our depth pass in here. And we can come in here 
Uh, you can use the lens blur for this, and that works fine. I have a plugin for it, so I'm going to use that. It's uh, called Depth of Field. And just tell it where your depth pass is. Set the blur amount, and then tell it uh, where you want to keep in focus, which is a really nice feature. And we can see that we have our, um, our motion blur. If we go to a frame where there is motion blur, as well as our depth uh, depth of field. So compositing fake motion blur and fake depth of field. All inside of After Effects we get a really great result and it's uh, a lot, lot easier on our render times. So there's the result. It looks awesome, if I may say so myself. And not only did it only take about 25% or a quarter of the render time, that it would have taken if we had have done it inside of Maya, but we also have the ability to tweak the settings. Um, if you spend a week rendering motion blur and then realize that, oh wait, it's slightly too much or slightly too little, you're screwed. But we can just go into After Effects and change the settings. I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial. I'm James Whiffen. Look for me on YouTube as James Whiffen VFX. Thanks.